So I think we've touched upon most of what I wanted to ask regarding vocational uh, training, regarding how it's going to affect the socially marginalized communities. Uh, so can you, uh, but uh, on ground when it's implemented, what kind of repercussions would it have? Uh, would it, you, said it, you said about commercializing education. Can you elaborate a bit more? Yes. See, uh, that ABC is the best, it, it is the tool. See, what will happen, the ABC allows the uh, students, the learners, to take courses across institutions, across states, and uh, as an extended version across the seas in different countries. That is the fundamental uh, idea of uh, internationalizing education. So what will happen? Say, let us take first uh, domestically and then we talk about international service. So in, in this country, if you uh, charge uh, per course instead of per uh, uh, year or a semester, what will happen? Who is going to regulate the fees? Even today, the regulation of uh, fees in different states are uh, as decided by the market force. I mean the uh, private educators and they are part of the game and government has some representatives, they discuss, they decide the fees. And uh, like Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, many states are following that. But per course, how will you charge? There are millions of courses which demand, some courses demand more practice based uh, and which incurs a lot of materials and cost and some courses not. And when millions of courses are there, not just thousands, and uh, thousands of domains are there. How are you going to decide the cost of the uh, studies per course and who is going to fix it? So eventually it will be left to the educators, I mean the institutions. Mostly now the private institutions are dominant and they have already taken a chunk of uh, uh, enrollment uh, from the public uh, institutions to the private. Like I don't want to name any institutions, you know in Tamil Nadu, even in other states, dominant players are private institutions, universities, and they have the market power and they have uh, uh, um, marketing uh, muscles through that they will reach out the students, attract the students, brainwash them, and uh, they are going to pay huge fees for per course. And eventually it is going to become a multi-trillion, maybe multi-billion dollar industry. So it is, it is a commercialization. It is commercialization, centralization and uh, it is communalization. So in that way, the ABC has another fallacy is that, say, it can be done only through online and if it is only online uh, is practically feasible, uh, then the cost involved in online, who is going to bear? And uh, most of the students uh, who cannot get, you know, uh, you know uh, high, uh, high band connectivities, I cannot get these uh, courses and uh, the accessibility in taking the courses in top-notch institutions is another problem. But beyond that, uh, the cost involved through online is another uh, uh, impediment and they are going to pay per course and they are going to uh, incur cost on the connectivities and other uh, resources involved and uh, it is a commercialization anyway. It's a full, a full blown commercialization. Normally, most of the uh, uh, people cannot afford. Okay, the other consequences, uh, the repercussions you said about the skills and the knowledge uh, as required by the 21st century. What is that? The 21st century skills are not the traditional skills and knowledge that we, in contemporary times, we groom uh, our 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 kids. You see. The, the issue is the consciousness, the human consciousness uh, and the judgmental capacities and their emotional intelligence matters more in 21st century than uh, the operational skills uh, being taught now. So that means we are looking for new competence, new skills, new knowledge. You think that these online ABC and all these value based education is going to impart this? Cannot, because unless it is left to the educators, I mean the academic councils, the, the experts really doing education service, 
uh, it cannot be done. So that means that the major flaws in this uh, process is we are going to be highly backward and highly uncompetitive in the 21st century and this is going to affect the economy and livelihood. Another issue is when you will have a livelihood increased or improved only when you are productive with your knowledge as a, as a part of, as a unit of your society. You have to be productive, knowledge productivity uh, only takes you to identify new avenues uh, and uh, uh, do new experiments to create your livelihood, new livelihood opportunities. Because the production and means of production in the 21st century is taking us to define a new occupations and uh, new livelihood opportunities. For that, education should be open-ended and it should give, it should be more democratic in nature. It should give more room for us to explore more and more our human endeavors. See, as a society, I have a learning curve and I have a lot of experiences and drawn from thousands of years of uh, the, 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 the human activities I cherished. And uh, if I just lose all these things and follow the standardized knowledge and skills imposed on me, and uh, I'm losing all my, uh, my uh, opportunities to increase or improve my livelihood. So livelihood gives occupations, occupations gives jobs. So these are the connectivities. So knowledge productivity, once it is stopped, the society will not be able to uh, uh, increase or improve its livelihood and uh, identify new opportunities for livelihoods and eventually there will be no jobs. So this standardized curriculum is going to directly hit the human evolution in this country and economic activities will be uh, very much uh, uh, you know, uh, pulled back and eventually the country is heading towards a chaos both economically and uh, socially. So I understand that uh, to some extent it has internationalized the frameworks uh, for higher education in the country. So isn't that good? Wouldn't it increase the standards? See, as I always used to say that education is contextual, regional, situational. And uh, one practice uh, in, 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 in some uh, regions, uh, you know, one best practice of some regions cannot uh, fit into some other regions. So in this way, uh, you cannot cut and paste uh, any best practice. The best practice, maybe it is best to European countries or to uh, some other countries where they have experimented for several years. But if you just cut and copy here, it would not work out because the, uh, say, uh, uh, for instance, in United States, the education is liberalized. It, they follow the pattern of liberal education. And uh, they know how to, uh, uh, what is the limit and what is the dose uh, uh, to, uh, up to which they can increase or reduce that liberal, uh, the, the liberal, uh, 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 you know, inquisitions in studies. Uh, whereas in, in India, if you apply the same uh, liberal education uh, uh, philosophies here, people will be construing them uh, it, it as something in, uh, with respect to their own wisdom and uh, with respect to their hidden agenda. So that danger is there. So that means if this is left to the society, it is better. So that means that you cannot co copy the or uh, quote the best practices being followed elsewhere in any part of the world and justify that people are doing there, why not we do it here? That cannot happen because one, even in European uh, Union, there are 48 countries uh, subscribed to the framework, but uh, they even 50% even of them did not implement it till now, after 20 years. So that means that it is not possible to standardize a system, even within their own region. How do you copy those things? You, you look at that, uh, the, 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 uh, the academic uh, knowledge and skills that they have made. They have segregated academic and generic. You look at that uh, educational or academic uh, skills and knowledge in our, in our framework. It is uh, something like, uh, uh, it's a cut and paste of European, uh, uh, you know, uh, they call it as uh, um, uh, descriptors, uh, the descriptors. 
and these descriptors they elaborate it uh, whereas in European Union it is very generic and they have copied it and elaborated it and, and, and they have uh, standardized more. So more standardization leads to less innovation. So that means that you cannot copy internationalization. And the internationalization, one of the reason is that India has subscribed to God's agreement in the year 2005. They opened up the higher education market 2005. But till now, no universities uh, are able to come to India and establish their universities. Why? Because there was no law passed so far till now in the parliament allowing the foreign educators to establish institutions here. But one of the aspects of uh, the guards agreement is, uh, you know, exporting uh, educational services across the without establishing institutions in the concerned country. So that means without their physical presence in India, they can export their services. How can they do it? You have to have ABC. They can easily export the service. And they have to meet the, uh, they have to comply with the uh, guards agreement. The World Trade Organization is pressing the government of India. You have signed in 2005 and you also have benefited from our trade agreements on many other aspects. Why don't you allow us to enter into education? That is the uh, compulsion they have. And they could not uh, directly allow them to establish the service here. So indirectly they want to have a framework like this so that they can deliver the services uh, having their presence there. So these, uh, these are the consequences of uh, uh, internationalizing the uh, curriculum through this framework. So we have a particular uh, government uh, party ruling in the center and they have a particular ideology which is uh, totalitarian, which is a Hindu majoritarian uh, ideology. Does that get reflected in this framework? Uh, that is what actually <clears throat> I have to go a little bit detail actually when uh, a nation state the concept of nation state is about it maybe 200 years old and uh, primarily the nation states uh, those who are in governance uh, took education as a public cause and uh, they were held responsible just 150 200 years ago to cater education only then people will be able to uh, democratically, uh, uniformly or equally uh, get access to education. So that was the primary purpose that education was taken, uh, the, the, the responsibility of education was taken by the governments. Uh, but now it has turned into a, a, a kind of a tool that the nation state take education as a platform, as an instrument to create a citizens of uh, per their wishes and aspirations. So that is now uh, getting reflected in the current uh, right wing government. We are that government is known for its own ideals, the Hindutva and uh, uh, Hindu Rastra and uh, 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 majoritarian approaches. These are all the, uh, the symptoms of this government and this government you know, cannot establish law, it is unconstitutional. If they implement these, uh, uh, the majoritarian approaches, the constitution will, uh, will, will prevent them from doing so. So the only option is uh, penetrating into the society and how to do it the, through a socio-cultural movement and they are already doing it. They have their sisters organizations doing it. But since they are in the government, Education is the best platform for them to implement and inculcate their ideals of majoritarian ideals uh, so that uh, they can create a, a uniform citizens uh, which are obedient to the nation state. Mostly you look at Mussolini or Hitler, anybody, and they also wish to create a, a kind of a nation state, uh, a majoritarian nation state in their own countries. Um, when they did so, they used education as the main tool. They did not use weapons and they did not use any laws and legislations because they could not make such kind of uh, laws and legislations because their constitution also did not allow them to do so. So the only way, informal way, 
which doesn't require any laws and legislations is education because education is more more uh, informal in nature where you can easily inject your ideals uh, and also students there from third standard to the age of 29 until the students study until they complete their uh, youth uh, youth youthhood and they want to take over the youths and create a new uh, citizen a kind of a citizen so that means that it is purely a, a plot it's purely a plot to uh, create a kind of a citizen as uh, citizenry that uh, that is uh, uh, that would further this government's uh, wishes and uh, long term goals uh, that is that's why they created the frame this is enough this what this is one great weapon enough for them to to achieve their goals so you are saying any education framework should ensure that a student can study fail as well as succeed mm -hmm. uh, given another opportunity but this framework does not have that uh, so what kind of a repercussion would that have see uh not only this framework you look at the early childhood uh, childhood uh, learning that they are going to introduce in school education right from third standard onwards they are going to have a kind of a, a so called public examinations like that third standard fifth standard eighth and uh, from ninth onwards the secondary uh, school starts from ninth onwards they have uh, 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 so they are going to implement semester based system that means from 9th to 12th four years eight semesters and eight public examinations so uh, eight plus uh, these three about 11 public examinations in 12 years time frame students are going to take imagine the hardship involved and the filtrations involved the government doesn't want more graduates they want more workforce operators okay no problem any country you go there are more operatives no more workforces uh, there will be less uh, uh, you know graduates but uh, it should not be uh, in, uh, implemented in a segregated fashion isn't it the haves will have degrees the have nots will be workforce the haves will have uh, honors degree research based degrees the have nots will not have this is the partiality it is going to do so the filtration starts from third standard onwards third stand onwards and then it continues up to the entry exit multiple entry exit systems they are planning to have so in this multiple exit systems what is going to happen is that the multiple uh, exit means it is not optional for the students that is one side they can also opt if they have no money or if they have any personal problems they can just opt to leave out and then enter back that is optional but it is forcefully also sending the students out if you fail then you have to be retained detained in that at that milestone and you have to get through it to pursue the studies until then you are stopped there so that means there is a forceful exit also is involved in this framework if that happens what will happen so that means that this system this framework thinks that when a student fails that is an end to him he should not succeed so education should primarily give up opportunities to students to fail i'm not asking students all students to fail if they succeed in the first uh, stroke welcome but in case if they fail they should be given an opportunity to improve and succeed so that is the very fundamental idea of education the philosophy of education because failure means to them mark if they score less mark it is failure does it mean that they have less no, they are less knowledgeable and skillful are they testing the other skills and all round uh, uh, learning abilities learned abilities of the students by one single examination not practically not so you cannot consider a student just because he scored low or failed in the mark you cannot just kick him out because he learned and he has skills and he also has knowledge but only in this test he failed you should give him an opportunity to pursue learn more and exhibit his uh, talents and uh, abilities more so all over the world this is the philosophy but in this country never ever in the world in the history you will see a framework sending the students showing the exit door 
just because he failed. That in that case, what will happen that majority of the student is going to increase the uh, dropout rates in uh, among the rural uh, students and majority scheduled caste backward class students, they are going to face a very big problem. Uh, uh, that means that it is going to discourage the higher education and uh, detain them and stop them from pursuing uh, higher education. So you said during the drafting uh, period, a lot of stakeholders were not uh, taken into this process. Uh, the states were not considered, a, a diverse set of educationists were not taken into the fold. What about the implementation? Uh, would that uh, also not be in a diversified manner? Would that also be uh, in a very uh, narrow focus? No. Actually, any educational uh, uh, you know, interventions or uh, initiatives aiming for uh, uh, a good human potential uh, should uh, look into the diverse requirements of these societies, regions and uh, stakeholders, which are very diverse in nature. It's known all over the world, especially in a country like India, uh, which where the society is highly diverse in terms of culture, in terms of uh, social values and systems and language. And also uh, the demographic conditions also are so much different. You compare Tamil Nadu with Bihar, the demographic conditions are very much opposite in nature. So in this case, suitably, the educational interventions and initiatives uh, should be uh, devised in such a fashion so that it meets that requirements of that context. So whereas what happened that they are trying to standardize it, centralize it, make it uniform, so that there is no scope for innovations or there is no scope for any tweaking or fine tuning the uh, system to meet the requirements of that particular region of that particular society. So it's not at all possible. But the other question is, in addition to this, it is known historically and scientifically it is proved diversity leads to knowledge productivity. So you take Vygotsky and other major philosophers, they said that as long as uh, more diverse groups are involved, social units are involved, in learning, it increases the, uh, uh, the knowledge or the understanding. So that means that the mental development of the child increases when it is exposed to diverse uh, uh, learning. So that means various uh, social units, members of, from various social units are collectively when they are studying and that improves, uh, gives an opportunity for the students to uh, improve their innovations, uh, creativity and mental ability uh, that they call uh, uh, like so, something called the proximate uh, development, the proximate mental development. So that means that diversity is very much important even for research and knowledge productivity. It is known. So this is trying to kill anyway, but they are saying that we have the power to do it. Do they have a constitutional power and mandate to do so? Even constitutionally, they have, uh, they have no power and authority to do so. The reason is, the, in the list one, uh, uh, the entry 66 uh, permits, empowers the, uh, the, the nation state, I mean the, the national government, to uh, set standards and coordinate the things. So it is just a coordination and determination of standards, that's it. You cannot come and regulate it because this is 100% regulation. A, co a common curriculum framework is a regulation. It is not just setting the standards. Part of it is standard. You can set it as long as it is generic and where all stakeholders are involved. And if it is open-ended, you can set that kind of a standard. Or you can set uh, a standard like this is the uh, number of uh, credit, uh, volume of credit for this particular course. You can set that. But you should not go into detail and uh, create uh, the descriptors uh, saying that this is what you should learn. So this is, this is a blatant violation of the constitution because the entry 32 in the state list uh, empowers the state governments only to establish uh, and regulate wind up higher education institutions, not the center. So that means 
the federal the union government cannot uh, regulate the, uh, uh, the the curriculum or the educational process when the states have the power so constitutionally also this is against the uh, the framework is against the constitution they might they might say it is they have a scope in the concurrent list but concurrent list is subject to entry 32 and entry 66 entry 66 is a central list entry 32 is state list so the concurrent uh, list is subject to both that means it must comply with both uh, constitutional provisions so in that manner even in the uh, concurrent list uh, they cannot uh, use concurrent list as a as a premise to uh, implement this uh, framework. So you have said that this is not uh, taking into the states uh, along with the center, as in the state list and the central list are, are not being both given the, uh, the the chance that they have to be given. So does it mean that this framework goes by the uh, one nation, one language, one religion, uh, and one education policy, one education framework in that manner, is it headed towards that? Yeah, this is the extended uh, uh, consistent uh, uh, activities that the uh, union government uh, plans to implement in India. So they have been following uh, uh, several uh, uh, laws and amending a lot of uh, legislations and uh, initiatives they have taken to. Uh, make the oneness in this country in terms of society, culture, even uh, uh, the the, uh, the religious aspects are also involved. So they are trying to say that we are one country, one nation, so the education should also be one. But the problem is we are of different nations, that is the problem. We are all of different nations because we have um, uh, different uh, thought process going on in different regions. That's what I say that it is a, a notional nation. I call it as notional nation. Maybe it's a terminology, but it is nothing but that it's the collective consciousness of certain group of people or a society uh, in a given region in the country uh, that represents their wishes, their uh, consciousness and their culture and their value systems. And that is what I call notional nation. So that means that the nation, uh, the constitutional nation, which is driven by the constitution, should limit its activities and initiatives within the purview of the constitution. It should not go into uh, uh, beyond that and uh, create a kind of a society because the constitution doesn't allow the nation state to do so. So that means that this country has a different caste hierarchical systems and different communities and different cultures and lives and which is undemocratic because it is hierarchically placed. So in a given undemocratic society, the education should play a democratic role in, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, extending its uh, service, uh, 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 bypassing or demolishing the un undemocratic uh, the situations and conditions prevailing in this country. So that means that education and democracy are, uh, are both are related in such a way that more and more, uh, uh, you know, uh, open-ended, uh, free and democratic educational process you have, more and more democratization of the society will be happening. Uh, because we are unequal and uh, we are undemocratic. So, the society itself is not able to reclaim its weaknesses, uh, its unequal and undemocratic weaknesses itself for the past several thousand years. So that means that education at least should do its minimal role in attempting to incorporate all the diverse views of uh, the society's requirements of the society into its curriculum, into its educational service process so that it will at least over a period of time will try to uh, reclaim uh, over a period of time the undemocratic or unequal conditions of the society. So that is the kind of educational uh, policy, philosophy and system we need in this country. Certainly the country uh, ruled by this current government with these frameworks and the national education policy 2020, the total, in total it is trying to uh, 
put uh, its own uh, majoritarian agenda into it and it is not taking into account the ground reality. So that means that it is against the people of the country, it is against the, uh, the society and it is against the uh, nation itself. So in that way, this, is, uh, this must be thrown out. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.